Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. So we talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm Rose Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. This is the time of year when March Madness is going on, when the coaching carousel is at its craziest in college basketball, because usually the teams that don't make the NCAA tournament are the ones moving on from their head coaches, and that has been the case this year with programs like Louisville, Michigan, West Virginia, Oklahoma State, all having their jobs open. Ohio State as well. Some of these jobs have already been filled, but West Virginia, they have their next head basketball coach, and Darian DeVries, the Drake head basketball coach. I'm going to go over whether Darian DeVries was the right hire for West Virginia, and whether the Mountaineers will be able to turn their program around with a new coach. West Virginia is a program in college basketball that has a good fan base, pretty decent NIL support, and overall, the program benchmark is basically to be a competitive team and make the NCAA tournament almost every season and in the years that they don't they should at least be competitive and Bob Huggins he did that at West Virginia he took them to the NCAA tournament most of the years that he was at West Virginia but we know what happened at the end of his tenure he got into trouble multiple times and he ended up basically getting fired slash he kind of resigned there's still a little bit of controversy with that situation it kind of looks like he basically got fired but it is what it is. It's unfortunate because Bob Huggins was very solid at West Virginia. And if you guys watch my videos talking about the transfer portal players that West Virginia was bringing in this past offseason, I was hyping up the Mountaineers with Bob Huggins at head coach. I thought they were going to be really good this past season. But then when Bob Huggins basically was out of the picture, and then they did lose Trey Mitchell to the transfer portal, and then it was announced that they were going to be going with an interim coach in Josh Eilert because they didn't have any other choice. It's not like they could hire a head coach that late in the game. Then things just went down the tank, and West Virginia ended up being the worst team in the Big 12 this past season. They did have their moments. They knocked off the Kansas Jayhawks, but they still won under 10 games on the season, and they were pretty awful. And now Josh Eilor is not being retained at West Virginia, and they had to get a new head coach. And Dusty May, it was looking like he was a candidate for the job, but he ended up going to the Michigan Wolverines, which kind of makes sense because Michigan is in the Big 10. That's where everybody wants to be right now, either the Big Ten or the SEC. And West Virginia and Louisville, they're the two programs that were still waiting to get their guy. And I thought Mark Byington, the James Madison head coach, once James Madison lost in the NCAA tournament, which they just have to the Duke Blue Devils, I thought maybe he would become the next head coach of West Virginia because it kind of makes sense. Mark Byington is in the state of Virginia at James Madison, so he's familiar with the area. West Virginia is not that far away. He's had a lot of success at at James Madison, and I thought that would be a really good replacement option since Dusty May didn't end up being the guy. But Darian DeVries, the more you look into him, the more you kind of like what you see if you are a West Virginia fan, because he was born in Iowa, so Iowa is relatively similar to West Virginia. Not exactly the same, but geographically it's not that far away. And you can tell that DeVries is a guy that sticks around. He played at Northern Iowa for four seasons in college basketball. Then he was a Creighton assistant coach coach from 2001 to 2018. How many coaches do you know stay as an assistant at one school for 17 years? That's absolutely unbelievable. Maybe he was waiting to get the Creighton head coaching job, which that didn't occur because Greg McDermott's done a fantastic job at Creighton, and he's going to be sticking around for many more years to come. But he got the Drake job back in 2018, and Drake, they're a program in the state of Iowa that a lot of people just didn't really pay attention to in the Missouri Valley. Loyola, Chicago was getting all the attention. Bradley's had some years, but Drake, normally not a program people do think of when it comes to college basketball, but that's where Darian DeVries comes in, and he's had a lot of success at Drake, building up that program from his first season when they made the CIT tournament, and then he made three NCAA tournaments in the last four years. The only problem is he did never advance in the tournament, but at a program like Drake, I don't really think it matters all that much whether you advance in the tournament. It's just if you get there, Yes, you love when you have a guy like Dusty May who's able to go on an incredible Final Four run, but even Dusty May was literally one point away from not being able to advance in the NCAA tournament last year when they barely beat the Memphis Tigers, and then this past season, Florida Atlantic didn't advance, and Michigan's still taking a chance on him because of the success that he did have down there at Florida Atlantic, and I think with Darian DeVries, there's just so much good on his resume that you can't really say that this is a bad hire. Whether it works out or not, it's going to be a tough job 
for Darian DeVries. And some people are saying maybe he should have taken a better job. But when you look at all of the jobs that are currently available, possibly the only job that's better than West Virginia is Louisville. The Cardinals are probably a better job. But I think the Big 12 might be a bit more stable of a conference than the ACC is right now. That could change on a dime. We have no idea what these conferences are going to look like in the next three or four years. But especially when it comes to basketball, the Big 12 is more stable than the ACC, and Louisville is a program that's been really struggling the past few years after the fallout of Rick Pitino. Yes, West Virginia's had similar problems, but it's only been one year where they've been really bad. They can still turn this thing around fairly quickly, and Darian DeVries' record at Drake was 150-55, and and he was 78-33 and in conference play, and over 70% winning percentage in both of those categories. Like I said, three NCAA tournament appearances. It's very impressive. And not only is Darian DeVries going to West Virginia, the forward from Drake, Tucker DeVries, is transferring to West Virginia as well. His son, Tucker DeVries, is joining him through the transfer portal. He's joining the West Virginia Mountaineers. That's massive as well because Tucker DeVries is a very good basketball player. If you look at what he's done at Drake, playing for his father, as a freshman, he averaged 13 points per game. As a sophomore, he averaged 18 points. And as a junior, he's averaged 21 points per game. His three-point shooting percentage has hovered in the mid-30s throughout his three seasons, and he does shoot a fairly high amount of threes. So as a higher-volume shooter, it's not a bad percentage. He shoots well at the free throw line. He's a good rebounder. He's a 6'7 forward, so he kind of has the skills to play a little bit inside, as well as being able to shoot the three ball. So I like the addition of Tucker DeVries for the West Virginia Mountaineers. His scoring probably will take a dip with the Mountaineers, though, because when you have a guy that's averaging over 20 points per game at a smaller school, and then he makes the jump to a bigger school, the scoring is always going to dip. Look at Jordan Dingle that was at Penn, who averaged 25 points per game, basically. He transferred to St. John's, barely averaged 10 points this past season. You look at a guy like Khalif Battle, who averaged like 20 points at Temple. He barely averaged 10 points per game at Arkansas. Max Amos averaged like 25 points per game at Oral Roberts. That lowered to around 15 points per game at Texas. So Tucker DeVries, you could probably expect him to average around 12 to 14 points per game next season for West Virginia. It's still a great addition for the Mountaineers and with him being familiar with his father's coaching style and having so much success playing for his father, I believe he will be able to make the jump up to the Big 12 and play at a fairly high level. So that's awesome for West Virginia to get that package deal. I did a Twitter poll asking people, will Darian DeVries succeed at West Virginia? 68% of people said yes. 31% of people said no. So overall, most people are pretty high on Darian DeVries. And I asked Joey Foster, a massive West Virginia fan, what he thought about the Darian DeVries hire, and he says that he thinks the offense will be great, but he does worry about him playing small ball in the Big 12, and I'm also concerned with the defense as Drake was 122nd, but I do trust Ren Baker, the athletic director, to know what he is doing and make the right decision there. So Joey Foster does like the hire overall, and that's kind of the pulse of the West Virginia fan base. Overall, they're pretty happy with it. There are a couple of things that you could say, mm, it could be a little bit of a concern, the fact that he he is in a mid-major conference, never coached in the big leagues before, and the Big 12 is such a tough conference in college basketball right now. His defenses sometimes struggle a little bit. The offenses are better, but I think if he can get the right players through the portal, maybe bring in a couple more guys from Drake and then fill out the rest of his roster with more portal guys and maybe be able to keep some of the players from last year's team at West Virginia because there were a few decent players, then I think he could have some amount of success in his first season. It's going to take him a while for him to have a lot of success I don't think this is going to be a quick turnaround. The portal and NIL help a lot, but there's so much competition right now in college basketball, even when it comes to these coaching searches. That's why Louisville, a proud program, is still without a head coach, even though that should change soon. And we'll have to see if they go after Bryce Drew, the Grand Canyon coach, or Mark Byington, the James Madison coach, or somebody else. Those guys would still be solid options. Oklahoma State still looking for their head coach. They thought maybe Darian DeVries would become the next Cowboys coach, but that didn't happen. So West Virginia got fairly lucky to land a solid coaching hire in Darian DeVries. It's not a slam dunk hire. There is a chance it doesn't work out, but he does have a great track record. He's bringing his son along for the ride, even though he's only going to be there for one season, but he should do good things in his senior season at West Virginia, and we'll have to see if Darian DeVries can make West Virginia a competitive team next season. It's going to be a tough mountain to climb, no pun intended, but the Mountaineers, they're a rugged program. They have a fantastic fan base, and they got their guy in Darian DeVries to be their next head coach, and we'll have to see if it ends up working out. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, whether you like Darian DeVries as the next
next head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers. And whether you believe he will be a perfect fit for the Mountaineers and have a lot of success, or whether you think he will struggle and ultimately end up getting fired, and if there were any other coaching candidates that you would have preferred to be the head coach at West Virginia, subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Follow me on Twitter as well. Link is in the description, and I'll see you next time.